Hallo, fellow board gamers, this is Marcel from your Lord of the Games. Hallo, ihr Brettkarten- und Tabletop-Spieler, hier ist Marcel von euren Herren der Spiele. And we do have two special guests for tonight. Wir haben zwei besondere Gäste. The first one is Emil Larsson from Sunzu Games. Hallo, Emil, uh, greetings from Germany to Denmark. Good evening to you too. And then I have some support from uh, one of my friends here, Andreas. Hi, Andreas. Schön, dass hey. du da bist. Danke für die Einladung. Okay, Emil, now you are the star guest, the, the man of the day. Uh, would you mind to tell us something <coughs> in, in a few sentences about yourself? Who are you and what is Sun Tzu Games? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm... Uh I'm uh, I'm 37 and uh, have a wife and two kids and live uh, happily in a house and then I decide to do board games so I don't know what have come over me but uh, I've done uh, two board games in the past uh, I have worked eight years in the army I have been uh, I've been a designer project manager and stuff and now I'm here doing um, like leadership training and and such things. Uh, as everyday job and a bit of study also and then board gaming cool. which uh, i i'm trying to to turn into also a, a full-time job or something like that i anticipate that this will be a success from what i know okay emil uh, wohnt mit seiner familie als familienvater vater zweier kinder in dänemark er war acht jahre in der armee er hat schon zwei kleinere projekte gemacht er arbeitet so im führungskräftemanagement und jetzt hat er uns ähm, ja einen ganz interessanten prototyp zugesendet das heißt ich durfte da schon mal reinsenden äh, reinschauen emil um, what is rogue angles you sent me a prototype of rogue Rogue angles. How did you come up with it? What's what, what's the matter with rogue angles? Yeah, what's the matter with? Um, well, rogue angels is a um, sci-fi dungeon uh, dungeon crawl ish kind of role playing game. It's a mix of of genres in the same vein as how Mass Effect is a mix of genres, and it's. Uh, the, the idea came from that I've been a Mass Effect for a long time, and I, I did my my first game called uh, Burning Suns, and I, I got this idea that I wanted to do a Mass Effect-ish board game set in my own established uh, world-building, um, you know, universe. And yeah, and I, I tried to to develop that for uh, for uh, you know, several years ago, and let it go and then i took it up again like one and a half year ago and um yeah it it, it just from the beginning after i kind of uh, cracked the the codes for for some of the mechanics it just clicked and i've been working hard on yeah play testing and designing and getting it to the the you know the final stage before kickstarter right so Okay, also, äh, der Kickstarter äh, startet übrigens am 1. Februar. Kickstarter will launch on February 1st. Ähm, und Emil hat jetzt seit einigen Jahren an dieser ganzen Sache gearbeitet. Man muss dazu sagen, Emil wollte so einen Genre-Mix herstellen, wie es übrigens auch bei Mass Effect ist. Emil ist ein großer Mass Effect-Fan. Das habe ich übrigens auch gleich bei dem Spiel gemerkt. Das hat sich sehr Mass Effectisch angefühlt. Und ähm, ja, er hat jetzt so, und, und das kann ich auch wieder an der Stelle schon unterschreiben, so eine Art Durchbruch gehabt, so den Code geknackt, was die Mechanik angeht. Das zeigen wir euch aber gleich ausführlich im Tabletop Simulator. Um, uh, Emil, uh, Mass Effect, you talked about Mass Effect. This is what I also felt, but I also th thought a bit about uh, Firefly, Star Wars and so on. Do you think you can tell just two to three sentences about the story or do you think we would um, spoil something? I don't know. Can we talk about well, Umbrasios? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the story is uh, take place in, in, in this universe that has just kind of uh, crumbled into a, a galaxy-wide conflict. And um, it's actually built uh, through a, um, a book or several books that my author, uh, Lisa, who, uh, who has written books in the Burning Suns universe uh, together with me, like, you know, trying to plan, uh, you know, these big plot threats and all that stuff. And um, 
I wanted to to set the game in in this kind of period of conflict because there's been a long period of peace and it had kind of crumbled now as as more and more threats are, are in the horizon. And uh, you will be a small team or um, a band of brothers or you know mercenaries for hire who will will try to to just make their way in the galaxy, but they will also be forced to choose sides and yeah. Very cool. Okay. Das Ganze auf Deutsch basiert auf einer Romanvorlage. Lisa, seine Autorin, Co-Autorin, die haben zusammen an einer Burning Suns Reihe geschrieben. Das heißt, das Brettspiel Rogue Angels spielt in diesem Universum, in dem die Galaxie sich im Krieg befindet. Wir selbst sind eine kleine Gruppe von Mercenaries, also Söldnern verschiedenster Rassen, also nicht alles nur Humanoiden, verschiedenste Rassen, die zusammen auf einmal in das Abenteuer geschmissen werden und regelmäßig Entscheidungen treffen müssen, für die eine, für die andere Seite und daraufhin entwickelt sich das Ganze und wir werden Teil dieser Geschichte. Und das ist eigentlich schon Grund genug für mich, sich das anzugucken. I'm a huge story fan, I do want to live in that story and I think this is exactly what, what Rogue Angels promises to me. Um, Emil, I don't want to talk too much about mechanics now, but um, as, as some people are watching now for five minutes, can you talk three to five sentences about what's special on your mechanics? What's the unique selling point you think? <coughs> well, um, the, the story part has a choose your own adventure part. So, so it's, it's very streamlined and easy to manage the story. So there's definitely that uh, part of it. For the gameplay itself, um, you have action selections that has a specific cooldown system that makes it rewarding to make the right decisions in specific moments. So you have to make up your mind on how you want your your turns to to be affected and how effective you want to be on your turns moving forward um yeah Okay, also, wir haben hier auf der einen Seite, storytechnisch haben wir so ein Choose-Your-Own-Adventure-Brettspiel, ähm, Dungeon-Crawler-Brettspiel. Und auf der anderen Seite haben wir einen äh, Action-Selection-Mechanismus. Das heißt, ihr werdet gleich sehen, wir haben ein Charakterboard. Es gibt individuelle Charakterboards. Und äh, wir müssen auf Basis einer Cooldown-Mechanik, müssen wir Aktionskarten spielen zum richtigen Zeitpunkt. Denn der Zeitpunkt, den wir auswählen, der ist dann erstmal thematisch und auch mechanisch besetzt. Und wir müssen dann erst wieder diesen Cooldown-Spot freikriegen, um dann weitere Aktionen spielen können, die eben genauso viel Zeit in Anspruch nehmen. Das Ganze, werdet ihr sehen, ist eine sehr durchdachte, auf einem minimalistischen Niveau angesiedelte äh, Mechanik, die aber extrem viel Spieltiefe und Spielspaß verspricht. Okay, I added some things now, Emil. Uh, I said to me, it is a kind of a minimalistic uh, approach to board gaming, mm. but um, yeah. an approach that leaves a lot to uh, enjoyment of the game, uh, enjoyment of the story, and you don't have to do that much micromanagement as um, it is in other dungeon crawlers I played in the past. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Uh, I very much take, um, I look at computer games or video games and look at their mechanics and When I interpret those mechanics, I try to distill it into the the simplest form of how can I make these mechanics actually be possible for players when you do not have a computer that can calculate something, right? Uh, and uh, I think that has worked very well with uh, with Rogue Angels, uh, where there are several uh, elements and mechanics inspired by what computer games usually do. Definitely. Ähm, Emil hat so diesen Ansatz genommen, von den Computerspielen weg zu den Brettspielen, hat also versucht, das Entscheidende, das, was uns Spielern Spaß macht, so raus zu destillieren. Also das Beste kennt man ja dann von einem, von einem guten äh, Whisky, wobei ich jetzt nicht der Whisky-Trinker bin. Äh, und, und das hat er versucht rauszunehmen, in ein Brettspiel zu übersetzen. Und wir gucken uns das jetzt im Tabletop-Simulator an. Das heißt, kleinen Sprung an dieser Stelle. Wir sind gleich wieder da und zeigen euch, wie Rogue Angels funktioniert. 
funktioniert. Wir erklären so ein bisschen was kurz über die Mechanik, die Elemente und dann spielen wir auch mal ein paar Züge durch. Andreas, wir beiden sind gespannt, oder? Sehr. Ich freue mich drauf. Cool. Okay, so let's start. Now, this is what we see now is one of the mission Emil has prepared for us. You see the table and I will hand it over to him uh, in a second. Leute, was ihr hier seht, ist jetzt also eines von eine, eine Partie. Uh, Spoilerfrei, wie er uns gesagt hat. Uh, one question now, Emil. This is a, a storybook. It unfolds, yeah? Yeah, um, for, for the audience, which is important, Map 5, what, what we see, it's a story book, so it's, it's, it's not uh, a board, it's a book, and uh, you turn pages, and then you see different uh, boards, you see then different pages aus diesem Buch, and on the rechten Seite seht ihr unser Raumschiff, was dann an das Buch, also an die Karte andeckt. Now, uh, it's up to you, Emil. <coughs> Your game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so... If you were to to start this out like uh, from from the very beginning, you would uh, just put out the board and you would have your campaign book, which you can see over here. And of course, you would put out the components that is required, but those will be picked as we go along. So in order to start a game, you need to have a character. And you would choose uh, a character. You would get three or four characters handed out to you, and you could choose the character that you want to play as. You can see 12 of the 20 characters over here. Yeah. And you can just choose whoever you want and whoever you think would be uh, cool to play as. Okay, I, uh, actually I'm highlighting them now. Um, <clears throat> Wenn wir eine Kampagne beginnen, es gibt zwölf verschiedene Charaktere und wir dürfen jetzt einen von den Charakteren aussuchen. Ich werde jetzt einfach mal einen aussuchen, den ich nicht im Prototypen habe. Um, Emil, I, I, I'm going to pick one of the characters I do not have in my prototype. So, um, Andreas, you, you do pick for yourself. Uh, which one do I want to play? I would like to play Quorox, the Guardian. Can I pick yeah. him? You can pick anyone. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Uh, how do I open it? Drag and drop, or <coughs> you just uh, yeah, you just drag out of it's uh, it's like a bag. Bag. Ah ah ah! Now yeah. I have the bag. Okay. <clears throat> okay. This is Quorox, and um, I put <coughs> it here. <coughs> do you prepare the rest? I will prepare the the board itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Andreas. Oh, uh, uh, and you you chose uh, course. I, everything is inside here. I will just give you the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hi. there. So while while um, Emil is um, preparing and uh, Andreas is. Uh, Selecting, I will show you. Hier haben wir also den Standy von Quorox. Das hier ist die introductory Seite, also die Einführungsseite von Quorox. Probably, Emil, I don't know if we need the introductory side of the character board, but you have to decide that. Um, <coughs> here we have the uh, action cards. Da haben wir die Aktionskarten. Yep. You can just take them on your hand straight away. Okay. Take them on your hand. If you... Click uh, seven. You will. Seven, you seven. will draw all. Uh, This cards. is what what I'm yeah. not able to uh, do. I can work with tabletop simulator. That good. So here we have now the card hand. Um, jeder Spieler hat sieben Karten. Every player has seven cards. Uh, it has to be two basic cards. The basic interact card you see here. I do have a basic move card as well. I I highlight it for the audience now. Also basic move and basic interact. Um, das haben alle Spieler und die anderen fünf Karten. Die sind unique für jeden um, Charakter. They are unique to every player. Here the shield emitter, the shoulder pulse rival. Um, I think, Emil, uh, the other cards are the cards that make my character a guardian. Is that correct? Yeah, the, the, but the basic, uh, basic interact and basic move will, will start out uh, similar to every other characters, but they will actually also evolve over time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the five of the cards is what makes you um, uh, the Guardian here and Korox in this instance. And also, of course, his uh, character sheet, the one you have mm -hmm. placed here, right? Genau. Okay. Das ist also der Charakterbogen. Das seht ihr hier links oben. Seht ihr sein äh, Bild. Dann seht ihr den Namen. Taking the Hit ist seine Special Ability. Die hat nur Korox. Auf der linken Seite, ich weiß nicht, ob Emil das gleich macht, sind gleich diese Personality Traits. Das sind halt nicht auf diesem äh, Anfangstableau. Dann seht ihr hier die Fokusmarker. Ähm, oh ja, jetzt habe ich es gerade weggemacht. Die Fokusmarker 
sind sozusagen Reroll-Möglichkeiten. Dann natürlich braucht ein guter Guardian, braucht Schilder. Wir haben also fünf Schild-Token, wo er einfach Damage abwehren kann. Und dann gibt es noch Scars auf der rechten Seite. Das sind Narben, aber die sind jetzt auch noch nicht hier dabei. Emil. Yeah. Your turn. Yeah. You, um, I think since, like, I mean, uh, both your audience and, and yourself is, uh, are experienced players, uh, yeah. most, so, you know, you can, you can, uh, you can grasp all the, uh, the facets, uh, from the beginning, but if, uh, if you were to start out, like, play the first mission and so on, you would play on the introduction side here. You know. Uh, because it has all the descriptions and just try to get to know the mechanics. But since you are uh, uh, already uh, familiar with the game and, and experienced with such games, I will just flip you guys to this side here. Mm -hmm. I think it's important because the personality <coughs> on, the, on the left side is very uh, unique and important to the game and mm -hmm. to the cards. Yeah. Jetzt sehen wir hier auf der linken Seite sehen wir verschiedene Persönlichkeitsbereiche, also rot, gelb, blau und grün, wie die heißen, kann euch Emil gleich sagen. Die korrespondieren zu den Karten. Ihr habt also gleich Tokens da drauf und könnt mit den Tokens die Person, die Karten sozusagen boosten. Das zeigen wir euch. Hier zum Beispiel beim Shield Emitter könnte ich einen weiteren Würfel werfen, wenn ich ein grünes Persönlichkeitstoken verwende. Aber dazu gleich mehr. Mhm. Okay? Ja. Yeah. So, and I will just explain from uh, Andreas' uh, character over here, and I can explain you how the, the whole game uh, works. Wonderful, please how do How you that. play, right? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> at the beginning of a, a mission, I will just start by like uh, just highlighting the different elements. You have your name and illustration and species here. So then you have a special ability. In this case, Sigun, she has two special abilities or oh, things unique for her mm -hmm. you have your uh, um, uh, personality diagram here and yeah. i will get back to that <laughs> we have our focus track and we have our shield track and then we have scars scars are not relevant right now so we'll just say the focus here is used for re-rolling dice mm -hmm. so you can spend one re uh, one focus to re-roll one die <clears throat> shield you use to to absorb damage so whenever you're dealt damage you will first be dealt on the shield unless it goes uh, through shields of course so over here we have the activation token which is the one you will flip once you have performed your two actions once your turn is done you will flip your activation token to to signal that your you know your character is spent for now so everyone has to spend their character before everyone can go again. Mm -hmm. So it's just a way to make sure that everyone has have their turn. <clears throat> so in the bottom, which is also drawn on the table, that's not necessarily something I advise people to do at uh, home when they get the game, but uh, here I've drawn it to, to help visualize it. This is where you play cards. So you play in what is called a cooldown track here. Yeah. <clears throat> so the bottom of the character sheet acts as this track. And this is where you will play your cards when you do them. So let me just first introduce you to how a play sequence works. Let me just translate it uh, just in short, because I already talked about it, but some people like to hear it in German. <coughs> okay, also Leute, weil ich es euch eben schon mal gezeigt habe bei Quorox, jetzt noch mal kurz zu Sigin. Hier seht ihr also ihr Konterfei, hier seht ihr den Namen, sie hat zwei Fähigkeiten, die sind einzigartig, Assassin Doctrine, Overwritten Protocol. Äh, ihr seht dann jetzt hier diese Personality Traits, die werden gleich noch mal wichtig. Äh, Emil erzählt gleich noch mal was dazu. Fokus haben wir eben gesagt, sind Rerolls, Schilde sind, um blockbaren Schaden abzuwehren. Scars, Narben sind jetzt noch nicht relevant. Jetzt eine ganz wichtige Sache, hier haben wir noch dieses Activation Tokens. Bevor nicht jeder Spieler sein Activation Token umgedreht hat, darf man nicht nochmal einen Charakter aktivieren. Jetzt hat er uns einen ganz coolen Hinweis gegeben, malt bitte diese Felder nicht auf euren eigenen Tisch. Hier beim Tabletop Simulator haben wir die verschiedenen Cooldown Slots. Hier unten drunter sind die unter 1, 2, 3 und 4. Da werdet ihr gleich eure Karten hinspielen. Was Emil uns jetzt zeigt, ist im Prinzip so eine idealtypische Play Sequence, also so ein Ablauf einer Spielrunde. Emil, your turn. <lacht> Emil? <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. 
let me just take you through the play sequence here. Yeah. Um, so, on your turn, you can do two actions, and and that's uh, that's it. Those two actions can be any of the three highlighted here in the bottom of this card. So, an action can be play an action card. Yeah. You can concentrate to regain focus. So if you've spent some focus on re-rolling dice, you can concentrate to gain two focus. And then you can rest. And rest means moving all cards on your cooldown track one slot to the left. And that's all. So, <clears throat> yeah. Ja, wenn wir an der Reihe sind, können wir ähm, zwei Aktionen ausführen. Zwei Aktionen. Und die seht ihr hier in dem grauen Bereich, Possible Actions. Wir können eine Karte ausspielen. So, dann führen wir die Aktion auf der Karte aus. Wir können uns konzentrieren, um zwei Fokus, die wir ausgegeben haben, also durch Rerolls zurückzubekommen. Oder wir können resten, ausruhen, um unsere Cooldowns um eins nach links zu schieben und so unsere Fähigkeiten bereit zu machen. Zwei und dann geht's weiter mit der Play Sequence. Ja. Ja, yeah, so let me just uh, do some examples for you. Yeah. We're using the cards, so we can get through the, the mechanics here. So, every character has up to three different types of cards. They all have seven cards, and there are three different types of cards. So I will just grab them here. Mm -hmm. There are movement cards, with the movement symbol here. There are interact cards with a hand here, which is usually the ones you use for dealing damage or interacting with objects or healing somebody. And then there are effect cards. And effect cards take effect when they are in the cooldown track. Mm -hmm. So the thing about playing these cards is that you must play them in the cooldown cost they have or higher. So in an instance here, if you wanted to, uh, for example, jump over here with this card, it's a movement card that allows you to jump over objects or em empty spaces, two squares, and then deal three damage to an adjacent enemy. If you want to do that, you must play it in uh, cooldown two, or in the <laughs> slot two here, yeah. or higher than that. So if you were to do this first and you then wanted to shoot, somebody or something you would have to play this card in three because there is not room in two anymore and then you would conduct this action here once you have done uh, completed those two actions then you would finish your turn by having a free rest action where every card would move one slot to the right because every oh one slot to the left sorry every card that goes out into zero like that jumps out of uh, slot one, will go immediately back to your hand. So in an instance here, if you wanted to shoot somebody and you had two actions, you could rest, mm -hmm. get this card back on your hand, and mm -hmm. then you could put it down in two and shoot. That's it, so easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And of course, you have your zero cards, which are all, always played in zero, yeah. so that you get them back immediately which allows you to always do two movement actions or two interact actions, no matter how filled your track might be. Okay, ähm, kurz auf Deutsch, es gibt also drei verschiedene Karten. Wir haben hier, seht ihr, diese Movement-Karten, da haben wir die Basic-Move-Karte, seht ihr rechts oben dieses Movement-Icon, dann haben wir Interact-Karten, die sind mit dieser Hand und dann haben wir noch diese Karten wie den Disruption-Suit, das sind Ongoing-Karten, die eben äh, einen Effekt erwirken, wenn sie sich in dieser Cooldown-Leiste befinden. Zur Cooldown-Leiste, ich mache es mal gerade hier, aha, guck mal, ich kann Andreas Karten spielen, äh, ich kann diesen äh, Disruption-Suit nur spielen, wenn, also in diesem Cooldown-Slot 2. Sollte dieser Cooldown-Slot 2 nicht frei sein, Beispiel, ich möchte die Enhanced Maglex spielen, die ja auch in den Slot 2 gehören, muss ich ihn in einen höheren Slot spielen, also in meinem Fall in die 3. So, das wären jetzt zwei Aktionen, die ich gespielt habe. Nach meinen zwei Aktionen in der Play-Sequence, hier habt ihr es eben gesehen, würde ich ausruhen und während des Ausruhens rutschen dann alle Karten einen Slot nach drüben, also nach links und sobald meine Karten hier hinrutschen, ja, in dem Moment bekomme ich sie sofort auf die Hand, 
Was übrigens auch bedeutet, dass diese Basic Interact Karten, die ich hier spiele, mit den Cooldown Kosten von 0 eben sofort wieder zur Verfügung stehen. This is wonderful and easy. This is what I talked uh, is the minimalism, ja? Yeah? <lacht> Dieser Minimalismus ja. im Brettspiel super leicht zu verstehen, wie ich finde. Mm -hmm. <lacht> And to uh, just um, now that we are playing the, the advanced version or, you know, after the introduction, ja. I will just introduce the personality elements. Ja. Because personality tokens you get from your personality diagram. So a character starts out with maybe one or two marks permanent marks in this personality diagram and she has and two. in the beginning yeah and in the beginning of a mission you are assigned one token per mark you have so she gets one in cautious and one in dominating and your character gets one in inspiring and no one has anything in supportive poor quorox <clears throat> yeah. so and these tokens here allow you to upgrade your cards temporarily as you play them mm -hmm. so in the instance that you wanted to shoot somebody again because it's always a good example to shoot somebody um, when you play the card it comes with a die that you will be rolling this card here in particular and not all cards have dice but um, when you play it you roll a die here it says one so you roll this die here but you also can Uh, upgrade temporarily upgrade your <laughs> uh, your weapon right yeah in this instance so let's say i was not too confident of me rolling a lot of pluses so that i would be able to upgrade my weapon mm -hmm. so because uh, i will just flip this over you can see here your, uh, your dice yeah. your dice results are here and just to quickly explain mm -hmm. those that when you use the The plus one, plus two, if you roll them and uh, you get a result of plus one, plus two, you are able to add those to any number in brackets on the cards. So in the instance here, if I rolled a, let's say, a plus one, mm -hmm. I would be <clears throat> able to deal one damage to an enemy within five squares, but it would be one plus one. So yeah. it would be two damage, right? And the same if I rolled a two, I could deal three damage. Or I could choose a plus one to my weapon or get a shield. I could gain a shield or I could get a plus one or a movement. Or I could get two movement points. So when, once you play your card, you decide if you want to roll the dice or if you want to uh, upgrade, you have to upgrade your... Um, before you roll the dice ah, I, i need to do that before i roll that was my <clears throat> yeah, question yeah, okay. exactly yeah okay you have to do it before you roll because you have to commit the resources that you're going to use for this so let's say i was not too sure if i needed to deal three damage i would need a plus two on my die right yeah in order to deal three damage with this weapon so i could spend a um a dominating token personality token here from dominating that would upgrade I weapon to deal an extra damage, so I'm already on two, and then mm -hmm. I could roll the die. Mm -hmm. Ah, I got a shield. I could then spend a focus yeah. to re-roll that and hopefully get something else. Ah, a shield or plus one. So now I could deal three damage with my weapon. Great. Okay. Um, in German, where we have the situation now. Um, wir haben euch jetzt eben gezeigt, wie wir Karten ausspielen in den Cooldown-Track. Und jetzt hat Emil uns gerade gezeigt, wie dann die Auktion, äh, die Aktion ausgeführt wird mit der Jamming Rival. Ihr seht, hier stehen Deal One Damage to an Enemy Within Five Squares, also einen Schaden zufügen an einen Gegner innerhalb von fünf Reichweite. Oder wir können interagieren mit einem Objekt für eins innerhalb von fünf Reichweite. Zusätzlich dazu seht ihr hier oben, werfen wir einen Würfel, hier liegt schon der Würfel und jetzt gibt es noch einen zusätzlich, denn Emil hatte ja über diesen Personality Tree hier, über diesen Baum geredet und da hatten wir ja hier zwei Tokens liegen. Und jetzt seht ihr hier auf dem roten, könnten wir hier im Vorfeld der Aktion einen roten ausgeben, um schon mal zu sagen, wir dealen eins plus eins Schaden und wir würfen den Würfel. Jetzt werfe ich den Würfel. Ah, warte mal hier. Warte, wie würfelt man denn den Würfel? Ja, zack. Uh, how do I roll the die? Emil, help me. I'm uh, not... On R. 
R, R, okay, R. So now, <coughs> now, oh, I will definitely not re-roll the plus two, na, because now, also, ich werde das nicht re-rollen, ich habe jetzt eine 1 plus die rote 1 sind 2, 2 plus 2 sind 4, das wären 4 Schadenspunkte. I would have scored 4 damage <coughs> now. This is how the Great. jamming rifle works, so funktioniert die jamming rifle. Your turn. And that's it. Like when you play cards, you you roll the dice, uh, and if you want to to use your personality tokens, you do that. Uh, of course, before you roll the dice. But other than that, you you once you have done it, you commit to the um, to the action. So you you can always um, you do not have to deal all the damage that you roll. Yeah. You do not have to move all the movement it's points just you, up to, you, you up have. To. It's just up to. Yeah. Every value that you have is up to. <clears throat> so once you have done this, uh, done the action, or once you have uh, uh, the action uh, completed here, then you can program it as you see fit. So let's see. I rolled a plus two movement, right? I could move one square and then shoot my rifle. And then move a square back, or I could move two squares and shoot my rifle, mm -hmm. or I could shoot my rifle and then move two squares. So I can program the outcome of my the resources I put into this action. I can program <coughs> the outcome as I see fit. Genau. Also ihr dürft euch auch im Nachhinein noch entscheiden, wie ihr dann eure Aktion programmiert. Das heißt, ihr müsst nicht im Vorfeld sagen, wir nehmen die ganzen Würfelergebnisse für Schaden, wir können dann uns auch bewegen oder ein Schild aufladen und so weiter. Wichtige Sache, ich sage es auch gleich noch auf Englisch, jeder Würfel darf durch diese Fokusmarke nur einmal wiederholt werden. Every die can only be rerolled once. Is that correct? Uh, every die can be rerolled as many times as you want, as really? long as you have focus. Ah. Yeah, but you you spend <coughs> one focus per die per reroll. Ah. So as long as you're focused, you can keep. Okay. Then then I I I uh, misinterpret <coughs> uh, misinterpreted it, uh, or I I I thought I read it in the rulebook somewhere that I can just reroll once. But this is not correct. Uh, you dürft so oft wieder den Würfel würfeln wie ihr uh, focus token habt. <coughs> okay. <coughs> So, and that's uh, basically the tour of how you play. I mean, then the campaign stuff, and we get into that, but uh, this is how you manage your, mm -hmm. your character and how to do the actions. Wonderful. Uh, also das ist jetzt eigentlich, wie die Aktionen uh, benutzt werden und wir werden uns jetzt einfach mal, wir werden jetzt natürlich nicht groß eine Kampagne spielen, wir wollen einfach nur sehen, wie das jetzt in der Aktion funktioniert. So, we want to jump right into the action, I think, and just see how it works. <coughs> sure. So where do we both start? <coughs> yeah. So um, this game here has these um, elements where you you choose your own adventure, right? So so you would of course have started from the beginning and get the intro and then build your character up from there. But we will jump straight to a mission here. <coughs> Let's see if that is the one. That is the one here. So it has a short introduction, but before on the mission previously, you actually would have met a character, an NPC. So you can decide whether or not you actually wanted to um, to take that character with you. Oh, great. You can also... Yeah, yeah. Also, so yeah. It, it's just to set the stage is that there is a lot of things going on and the stage that you're actually at, that we are artificially creating here, Uh, you would actually have had a character with you or not, depending on what you choose. So you can try to go easy or... Okay, an der Stelle müssen wir uns entscheiden, auf Basis der äh, Vorgeschichte unserer kleinen Mission, haben wir hier einen Companion oder haben wir keinen? Andreas, we both have to decide. What do you say? Do you want to have a companion? Willst du einen Begleiter noch dabei haben oder nicht, Andreas? Your decision. Um, with, companion, with a companion, it's uh, easy mode. <laughs> well, it's easier the mission. Uh, I I don't think uh, so. It's, If I, it's harder. It's, it it right. could be a little bit easier, ah. but it depends on where it goes. Okay, for the first time, I think we don't go with him. Okay, no companion. We have no begleiter. Companion, <laughs> <laughs> and then that means it also branches into a uh, a bit of a different uh, setup here. So. You can see here, if you decided not to have a, um, a uh, 
this companion with you, you will start the next mission with one unblockable damage. So, and also with trigger one already active. So, I will just keep that in mind, but you should start reading from the mission that you are starting with here, the mission brief for mission C5A. Mm -hmm. So this is just the mission brief, briefing, yeah. briefing, Umbrasius is, is telling something to us and uh, we just started for now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or do you want us to read it out? I don't no. think, I don't uh, think it's necessary now for, for no, uh, seeing no. the gameplay. We don't want no. to spoil anything. No. <clears throat> so, and here is one of the first uh, elements is that you will, of course, once ready, you will go to the next page. So there's a lot of these uh, breaks mm -hmm. where you only deal with one page at a time. For any given situation, the campaign only shows you one page at a time. It means that you can quickly put the game away, and it also means you can quickly bring it up again. And you do not have to cross-reference a lot of different information That's all the great. time. That's great. And, and we don't see where the treasure is hiding like in Gloomhaven. <laughs> no, no. Like, uh, you, you, it, it's, it's, it's not uh, the same kind of setup in that sense. Yeah. So das heißt, hier geht das Schritt für Schritt. Wir sehen immer so nur das, das für uns Bedeutende und wir können uns sozusagen nicht selber schon im Vorfeld äh, sehen, wo die Schatzkiste sich verbirgt. Ja, mhm. Yeah. So here is the setup, and I have uh, already done the physical setup yeah. uh, on the board. So, and there is a a short um, cutscene with Umbracious again, just to kind of set the stage in uh, prose, you could say, mm -hmm. so that he kind of puts some words on what is going to happen now, right? Mm -hmm. In two sentences, so, what do we have to do? Yeah. So you can see here the mission parameters is where you look for what you're going to do if there are any triggers and conditions. We have 12 and turns. What, yeah, and if there is a failure, what does that mean for the mission? Open the crate in the bunker north, <coughs> get all players into the facility east. So, Andreas, yeah. our job is to open this crate here in this bunker, which is guarded by this guard. The guard is guarding the crate, okay? And then um, go here to the east with the whole team in this room. This room or that room? Uh, that's the same. That's it the has same. all been it has <laughs> all been marked blue, okay. blue over here. Also, so unser team muss diese Tür öffnen, muss dann diese Kiste öffnen und muss dann als komplettes Team hier in diesen Raum kommen. Ja. Yep. Okay. So verstanden. Team is ready. Okay, so you can see here the triggers is that uh, if players find uh, find themselves within range and line of sight of the enemies at the end of your turn, or if they attack an enemy, change the enemy behavior card to coordinated defense. Ah, red side for all enemies. Yeah. <clears throat> so this trigger is already active and you guys will start out by drawing one card from over here because if you take damage that goes through your shield or if you do not have shield to block it, you will have to draw damage card from this deck. Mm -hmm. Now this has been shuffled so you can draw the top card, one of you, and then the next one can draw a card uh, and then it has to be placed on your track because yeah. as the... As the setting stated, you would have to start with drawing one unblockable damage. Yeah. Well, one thing just for the uh, EBC card deck, we did not talk about that now. Yeah. Um, hier seht ihr diese Apprehensive Attack, das ist die Enemy Behavior Karte, sozusagen eine Prioritätenliste, die von den Gegnern ausgeführt wird, je nachdem, ob sie rot oder gelb sind. Hier liegt jetzt rot gerade oben, it's the red card. Uh, we will see Emil acting uh, as the, uh, also it's a cooperative game, but he will act as the players now, he will show that. Uh, for, yeah, for now, we have to draw a damage card, and Blockable Damage. Jeder von uns muss eine Karte ziehen. Um, uh, how do I... Uh, F, F, F is that... Uh, so. I just draw one. Flip, yeah, like F. Quick. This, is, yep. this is my card. So, let's yep. let's look at my card. Oh, I have to... Uh, I'm not the... See, uh, <laughs> now, now you see why I do uh, physical board games. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> internal bleeding. 
Um, Quorox is, uh, has an internal bleeding, a bluted, mm. innere Blutung uh, on spot number three, cooldown spot mm. three. I have to place this card now here. Um, and now let's read it. When drawn, move a damage card one slot to the right and place this card on the spot three. As I do not have any damage card, I don't mm. have to move any damage card now. But this would be bad if I had a card here in my slot one. <laughs> mm. Because then my, mm. my injury would last longer. This is very thematic, I think. Um, <clears throat> ongoing, discarded, mm. so nothing now but it blocks this slot for now. Yeah. So no possibility for me to put my Titan Longsword on slot number three. I could just yep. put it on four. So just yep. in, in German... Emil, I love this mechanic. Also diese Mecha Mechanik mag ich ja total. Ich musste jetzt eine Damage-Karte ziehen. Ihr seht, die hat links oben hier diese 3, Cooldown-Mechanik 3. Ich blute innerlich, der arme Quorox. Ähm, wenn ich die Karte ziehe, muss ich eine bereits in meinem Cooldown-Track liegende Karte um ein Slot nach rechts verschieben. Habe ich jetzt zum Glück nicht. Das heißt, in meinem Fall blockiert jetzt nur diese Internal Bleeding ähm, den Slot 3 und verhindert, dass da Karten hingespielt werden. Very great. Okay. Mhm. <lacht> Um, and now your card, Andreas, severe shock. Yeah. Yeah. As It's you can see, there's a difference uh, between your two cards, even though they're both placed in in slot three, right? If Andreas was a very veteran player of the game, he might say, well, I will play on hard setting or insane setting. And that would unlock the lower ones here. So if Andreas was playing on hard, <coughs> An ongoing effect, which means as long as this card is in the track, all actions have minus one die. Wow. Which is significant, of course. Definitely, it's definitely. And insane is that when you discard the card, that means when it goes out here in zero and <laughs> discard it to the discard pile, yeah. this effect also is taken into. So if you had another damage card lying at that point, you would have to move that up one spot. Great. So uh, it's a handicap mode. Mm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So, right. and you can have those uh, different. Uh, like, Andreas could play with being on hard, and you could play on regular, or you could play on insane. You do not have to play on the same difficulty level. Mm -hmm. Ja, wir haben da noch so einen Handicap-Modus eingebaut. Der ist mir noch gar nicht aufgefallen vorher. Das heißt, wir könnten auf dem Hard oder sogar im Verrückt-Modus. Hallo, Becky. Schöne Grüße in den Norden. Spielen Becky insane. I told you, I, I told about that uh, Becky, <laughs> that YouTuber who every time is playing on insane mode. So this is definitely his <laughs> choice. Um, und dann macht man sich das Ganze einfach noch mal schwierig. Schön finde ich an der Stelle, dass nicht alle auf diesem Insane-Level spielen müssen, sondern Andreas könnte auch sagen, weil er sowieso viel besser ist als ich, spielt er auf Insane und ich spiele auf dem Standard-Modus. Ja, cool, great. Wie immer. <lacht> er gewinnt ja auch immer. So, weiter geht's. Go on, please. Ja. Yeah. So, you guys also start with the first trigger already active. Mm -hmm. So, um, that means that the players, or the enemies already on coordinated defense so we would find the card the red it's just a pdf but uh, yeah. um, it will be a card with um coordinated mm -hmm. sorry i think i went past that da, there you yeah, have coordinated it. defense red and it has a side of red and it has a side of yellow so on the first turn they will go with the red that means all enemies with red bases will program Uh, of uh, will use this programming and it will only be the uh, lowest initiative and second lowest initiative who will be uh, activated this time and then on their next turn after one of you guys have played because they go in between mm -hmm. every one of you then it would be the lowest initiative of the yellow and the second you lowest initiative okay yellow. yeah <clears throat> so That's just for you to know. Okay. So your objective is to open the crate in the bunker north, open the get crate. all players into the facility east. And you have 12 turns to do that because the turns are scaled towards how uh, many characters are in play. So when you're two <clears throat> characters, you would use 12 turns yeah. and so on. And also the amount of enemies are also scaled to that you are two players. So there's uh, two of the yellow base enemies and 
two guards, and then there are two with red bases, which are the two patrol droids. Okay, and uh, we just start now? You can start now, so you decide who goes first. <laughs> or you should also, of course, have a commander for this mission, so you yeah. can choose one of you who should be the commander for the mission. Andreas, where is commander? Commander is der, der das letzte Wort hat bei Entscheidung. Ich pass. Dann bin ich der Commander, okay. Um, so, now, this is a all about table talk, what I experienced so far. Wir müssen uns absprechen, Andreas. Um, wenn ich jetzt anfange, ich habe mir jetzt deine Karten noch nicht angeguckt, habe ich zwei Möglichkeiten zu bewegen. Ich könnte mich über den Basic Move bewegen, da kann ich mich in ein Feld bewegen, plus das Ergebnis meines Würfelwurfs. Die Karte ist sofort wieder bereit. Alternativ habe ich meinen Heavy Charge, da kann ich mich zwei Felder bewegen, plus das Ergebnis eines Würfelwurfs. Und äh, ich könnte noch das rote Personality Token, was ich nicht habe, ausgeben. Was machen wir, Andreas? Der äh, Heavy Charge, der hat dann Cooldown. Das ist vielleicht keine gute Idee, den jetzt zu nehmen. Soll ich mich mal bei Basic Move bewegen? Da du das Spiel schon ein bisschen kennst, entscheid du ruhig mal für dich. Ich guck. Okay. I, uh, I, I have to decide for myself. Emil, he told me. Um, mm -hmm. So, I use the Basic Move. Um, I am now allowed to throw one die. So, this is my die roll. Oh no! It's great. This is great. The best, the best roll. I, I can now move one space plus two spaces. So, um, I'm allowed to move um, in every adjacent uh, space. So, one, two and three. Das war meine erste Aktion. Und die Basic Move Karte geht sofort auf meine Hand, weil sie keinen Cooldown hat. Okay. Um, now, what do I do now? How can I hack the door? I have to open the door. Basic interact would be the card of choice, but I am not adjacent to the door. So, I think I play basic move again. Ich denke, ich werde jetzt einfach nochmal die basic move Karte spielen. You, you also have to take into consideration that the enemies have seen you, so they will be acting and you might want to, you know, start killing whoever you you can or, mm -hmm. or try to yeah, destroy now, now let me see if I'm able to within four spaces <coughs> four spaces let me count mm. one two three four I am not in range am I one two three four but I am in range mm -hmm. with the sweeper droid is that correct uh, the patrol droid patrol here, droid yeah. so also Emil hat mir gerade gesagt hat mich darauf hingewiesen <coughs> ist ja ein kooperatives Spiel ich muss ja auch ein paar Gegner kaputt machen the shoulder pulse rifle so now we can show uh, how it works in, in practice the shoulder pulse rifle has a range of four spaces vier mm -hmm. Felder Reichweite muss hier in den cooldown slot 2 gelegt werden cooldown slot 2 um, now I can deal Two damage to an enemy within four, and I could also <laughs> spend a green personality token. That does not make any sense because the card does not have any. So it's just two damage to the patrol a droid, and yeah. yeah, this one, and um, it had five health points. So so I've just genau. turned it to three. Uh, no shields, keine Schilde. Das heißt, der, der Schaden geht einfach durch. Fünf. Minus zwei sind drei. Ich habe zwei Schaden gemacht. Now, these were my two actions. Das waren meine zwei Aktionen. Wenn ich jetzt meinen Zug beende, kriege ich einen automatischen Rest. One auto rest. Uh, so, all my cards move one slot <coughs> to the left. Um, and now it's yep. time to flip my activation token. Uh, F. And now, uh, have, a, have a look here. Um, it's a mission check. We do... We, uh, no mission check needed because we don't have the crate yet. Uh, the enemies. <coughs> yeah, and you also <laughs> go down one on the. I forgot about that. Turn token here, yeah. Do never forget so about the turn token, yeah. And now uh, <laughs> the EBC card, enemy behavior yeah. card. So, here. I will be right back. Mm -hmm. So here, the lowest initiative will move towards last. Activated enemy, but will stay. You can read in the top. It says the activated enemy will seek highest range to fight from when moving. Yeah. So it will not go any closer than it has to. Mm -hmm. Maximum uh, range. And it might even yeah, it might even move backwards if if you are getting closer to yeah. it, right? <clears throat> so number one is the one up here you shot at. That would be the lowest initiative. It has a small one there. 
and it can move up to two and it has a range of three yeah so it that. only needs to move one and now it's in range of you yeah. because it moves towards last activated and then it deals damage to same or nearest player yeah. so it deals two damage to you two damage to me <clears throat> yeah. okay and that is so on the shield the shield yeah. <clears throat> i have five shields ich habe fünf schilder das heißt mein schild blockt einen schaden und zwei schaden und damit ist der schaden komplett abgewehrt no damage done to me no and the second one second initiative also moves towards last activated one two and then deals damage to same or nearest and then it would also deal damage to the second, second nearest but it cannot see the second nearest because there is a, a red uh, block here that blocks line of sight <coughs> no line of so, sight yeah no okay. line of sight mm -hmm. you see it so you wird take two more angreifen. damage der würde uns beide angreifen, hat aber keine Sichtlinie wegen den roten Büschen. Und jetzt macht er zwei Schaden. Das heißt, wieder eins, zwei. Und äh, ja, ich habe die beiden überlebt. Ja. Yeah. So, it's also worth noting that there are these fuel barrels here that might be good to hit at some point. You can shoot them. They only have one, um, one uh, health. Ja. Yeah. It's also here in the campaign uh, element. And they will deal four damage to anything within two squares. Wow. wow. So, so, so they can be triggered at some point. Good hint. Yeah. <clears throat> and this was the enemy activation, correct? Yeah, that's the enemy activation. No more. Okay. So we just let it stay on the red side. And then once we get to the next turn, after uh, Andreas have had his turn, then we'll flip it to the yellow side and we'll see what will happen there. So... Andreas, your turn. Okay. Perfect. Um, I think I move two. So I have to roll one die. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. So that's only one move. No, two. Uh, that's one plus one. Uh, one. Uh, so, yeah. so one two. plus one. And he would recharge one shield. Um, no, yeah, only or. if he yeah, decided yeah, that. Yeah, 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 correct. Because it's either or. Yeah, yeah. either or. Yeah. Okay, help me, Andreas. So, uh, I need your support, please. Uh, could, yes, for example, course. stand here if he wanted to hit this droid here. He could be over here because then he has a line of sight to this droid. Line okay. of sight, to explain yeah. it, is from the middle to the middle. You have that little spots there. Also, from the middle to the middle eines Feldes, you have the kleinen Punkte, auch auf dem physischen Prototypen. Is also ganz eindeutig, ob ihr den seht. <coughs> Andreas, was tust du? Um, or, for example, here. You can also stand here and shoot this yeah. droid here, for example. Okay. It's, I think that that's a better one. I move up here. Or only for understanding, I can move here too. And uh, see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no. Uh, it would be red if you cannot go there. Oh, okay. And you can, you can still, if you have the range, you can still see because you the characters do not block line of sight. <coughs> so oh, you're okay. just uh, shooting. Well, maybe not over Korok's shoulder because he's quite tall, but then underneath his legs, whatever. So. <laughs> I'm crouching for him if he's screaming. Yeah. <clears throat> I Kill can him. Jump shoot. Okay. Um, then the next one. I will shoot from distance. And I think I use my. Cool. Why not? Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. It's a, okay. That's a, then you roll the one die you have. Yes. Yeah. Whoa! Oh, okay. I don't need it, uh, but... <laughs> you never know, no. Yes. But let's say if this character, for example, was here... Yes. With uh, with four in health, and you actually wanted to kill this, but you roll plus two, and since you have you have just committed your 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 resources, now you could choose this one as your target instead, <clears throat> because there is no like before uh, before the roll, you do not have to commit to yeah. a specific target. Oh, okay. Yeah. So That's... you can always make the best of what you roll. So right? I, I see him too, or 
Uh, no, you no. would not. It, it would cross you are, the red he, spot. He yeah. would have to stand here, right? To cross the... Here? Ah, he would... Oh, yes. But you do not see uh, over there. So, that yeah, would be... Yeah, it looks like... But, yeah. but you killed the little droid. Yeah, yes. also... Vier Schaden, yeah. drei Lebenspunkte hat er gehabt. The first one is down. Great, great, great move. But your token is spent now for the, for the mission. Yeah. yeah, correct. Okay. <clears throat> And that was your two uh, two actions, yeah. Mm -hmm. So cooldown, please. Mm -hmm. My cooldown is. Yeah. And flip the activation token, <coughs> and then yeah. mission check, not needed. Uh, Enemy turn, flip turn the card token. to. to yeah. The yellow. turn token. Oh, the turn token. We always forget about the turn token. <laughs> That's why it's big and red. <laughs> yeah. Show us but it's easier to remember in physical. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So here we have the yellow side, and we have two characters with yellow. But number one is still behind the door, and whenever enemies are behind doors, they are treated as not being there. Mm -hmm. This means that the other guy is now a prime in a first initiative, right? Lowest initiative because he's the only one active, mm -hmm. even though he's two. He has the number two, right? So he moves and then he deals damage to same or nearest. So he would move up to three. One, One two. two, three. Move towards <coughs> uh, you guys here. Yeah, but, but he will not get any further than that. But he, he, uh, he just attacks three. adjacent, correct? He Yeah, he has a range of one. He's a melee character and he moves three. Good for us. But he has a shield. He has a shield, as you can see. Yeah. Both, uh, both on the illustration and on his stats, you can see there is shield. I killed them in the physical prototype as well. We can kill them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's it. Mm -hmm. That yeah. fast. So now you both have your turn tokens flipped back again, and you can decide who should go first now, because it might be in a position where it would make more sense that Andreas went, yeah. or it might be you. So... You know, that's, uh, okay, that's <coughs> wer von uns startet, mein Lieber? Mm. Eins, zwei. I could kill that mob. Which, which one? That yeah. one. You can kill him? I think. If you can do that. Ja, oh. äh, wenn du das machen kannst. Mein, ich würde den Heavy Charge nutzen. Ich würde ranstürmen und Schaden machen, aber äh, ich kann ihn nicht töten. So, Andreas thinks he can kill it. Then do it. I could just Heavy Charge yeah. and go to close combat. Um, probably then attack with the Titan Longsword. <coughs> I think I can kill him in one turn as well. But uh, Andreas, if you want to. One, two, three, four, five. <sighs> But if you want to, I can start as well. You have a range of one, two, three here. If you want to reach him by walking. Oh yes, I have to <coughs> walk very fast, far. Yeah. Oh, but, but, but yeah. We, can, two, we can now show uh, Emil. We can now show the commander token because the commander decides when the team is not um, <laughs> well, when we cannot <laughs> agree. So I decide that I go first because I'm the commander. <laughs> yes, it's so, better one. Yeah. <clears throat> and I do the heavy charge, uh, put it in slot number three. Now he has move yeah. two spaces and deal two damage to an adjacent enemy. Of course, I can roll a die and decide later. So I roll this die. Ah, perfect, perfect. So um, two damage. Also, I will move two spaces, and I can... <laughs> I will then use my longsword. So, see what I do. Uh, I use the uh, die for uh, shield recharge. Yeah, correct? Okay. Then yeah. I move one and two slots. Then I am adjacent, and I do two damage, and as he has no shield, uh, he's reduced to three. Also, er kriegt yep. zwei Schadenspunkte. Ich habe unterwegs noch ein Shield recharged. So, jetzt habe ich eine zweite Aktion. Ich werde mein Titan Longsword auspacken. Das muss ich auf Slot Nummer 4 legen, weil 3 ist besetzt. Also, Titan Longsword, Slot Number 3. Now I deal 2 damage and it is unblockable. Okay, he has no shield. <coughs> but keep that in mind for the guards. To an adjacent enemy, if you kill it, gain 2 focus. 
and I can also uh, re -ro uh, roll one die. Uh, action card. Andreas kriegt keine Action card. Ich, ich roll meinen Würfel. Boah, eins. So, I deal three damage. Three damage. Yeah. And it is and done. Is dead. <clears throat> yeah. And if I <coughs> had spent uh, focus points, which I don't, I would you regain would it. Yeah. And I Great. think that was not the worst turn. My activation is spent, and uh, now it's the enemy's turn. <clears throat> you also need to rest, of course. Otherwise, you will never uh, oh, get. Uh, excuse me. So <laughs> uh, my my uh, my yeah. This is what I forgot now. Ich habe gerade vergessen, mich auszuruhen, und das Turn Token habe ich auch vergessen. Yeah. Muss man ein bisschen aufpassen. Uh, but my rival is ready again. Now, yeah, <clears throat> the enemies, and since there is only yellow left, you do not turn it to red. Yeah, so card the yellow jetzt will go. Go again, and he will go one, two. Now he is touching base with you. Come over he here. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Come yeah. over. And he will deal two damage <clears throat> to you. This is no problem at all because I have two <clears throat> shields and no damage comes through. Correct. Now my shield are spent. Now I need your support, Andreas. Oh, of course. Jetzt brauche ich natürlich Unterstützung, weil weiteren Schaden will ich nicht haben. I don't can move so far. Well, you do actually, if you use your disruption suit, yes. it, it grants you two extra squares for your movement actions. So instead of playing it in two or three, since it's an effect card, you want the return on investment to stay as long as possible. You should play it in four so it stays wow. around. And then oh, the, okay. and the adjacent enemies uh, don't have any mm. shields in this situation. That's great. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. <coughs> That's great. That's really great. And you get two dice to roll with it, which could give you shield or could give you movement points in this scenario. Movement points would be the best. Oh, and... Wow. <laughs> great. I think that What did enough. you... Was it these two here? Yeah, these two. Yeah, three, three movements. Nice. Three movement. Ah, no, the plus, the plus Four. does not give you anything. It's awesome. only the movement points. Mm -hmm. Oh, the plus doesn't count. The plus, the plus does not add anything since there is nothing in brackets on your card. Okay. Ah, so okay. there, the pluses are actually not giving you anything, but you could regain shield or you could get movement points. So it's not oh, always that the cards or the, the the dice upgrade everything on your. Uh, but there is an instance like your heavy charge, which upgraded two numbers. Um, you know, on uh, Marcel's uh, uh, heavy charge, right? Mm. There are two numbers in brackets here. Mm. So if he different. wanted, he could re-roll it, but I don't think you have to, <coughs> because if you move two spaces, then I think you should reach line of sight. Don't you? Yes. One, two, three, four. I can move four. One, two, uh, two, two. three, four. Why? Why? why ah, because you. Where's Where's the four from? Or. Uh, you you only From get the two one? movement yeah yeah only those two <clears throat> but then all your your movement actions but yeah. this is not a movement action it's, uh, Andreas is very so, basic move card for example basic move would yeah if you play the a... basic <clears throat> move afterwards or if you play another movement card then you will get the bonus of the plus two uh, squares right mm. so right now you just gained two movement points from the die and that that's it. Mm -hmm. If you oh, want okay. to re-roll, you can re-roll the other die if you want to. If you think you need it. Mm, I can't shoot. Yeah, then re-roll it if you need that oh, katana okay. slashers. Re-roll mm -hmm. the one die if you want to. No, I think I do that to movement and to... True. And then. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool! I can do that. Yeah. yeah so I can jump you four. 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 Yeah. You can jump up to four because the plus uh, the yes. the two is upgraded with two movements. So. Mm -hmm. 
Very Not well that done. you needed it here, but it's still fine, yeah. Yes. <laughs> well done. And that one, and I can roll nothing, but I yep. can... I... The table deal three, three damage. damage. Yeah, you deal three damage, and since you have your disruption suit on, it goes through the shield. Or he doesn't have a shield, right? Cool. So it go. he goes <clears throat> down to one instead of to two if he had his one shield. Almost done. So my activation yeah. is done. Mm -hmm. And... And... Now it is his turn. Mm -hmm. Flip the turn token. Now, yeah. yeah. The the now turn token course. move here. Okay. Yep. Eight. So now Emil is, he... is luckily uh, striking us with the guard. Yeah. So and <gasps> uh, he's already at nearest player, which in this instance is um, Andreas's. Sigun is the nearest because straight lines are shorter than diagonal lines. So he will first hit you for two. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, in his sec uh, his third action, he will hit the second nearest player, which is me, which is Korok. Yeah. So you also take two damage. But I, <coughs> I will now have to uh, draw a damage <coughs> card, correct? Yeah. Yeah. You will have to draw one, and then you'll have to draw a second once that has been resolved. Hmm. So uh, how do I draw one card from the pile? Just quickly. You just do the same, but just quickly. So. Yeah. Like uh, that. So uh, th this can be bad now. So let's yeah. switch it, and it there's just one spot. I have to put it here, correct? But you have no. to when since drawn. it's a damage card. When you, drawn, um, yeah. First, first you have to do yeah. read. Says read. Here. Okay, move an action card one slot to the right and place this card on the three. So the Titan longsword to the right yeah. and put that here. Hmm. Which is unfortunate because if the Titan longsword had been on three, uh the damage card would have returned that to your hand. Mm. Because whenever a damage card has yeah. to be put where there is an action card, it is returned to your hand as an adrenaline boost. I read that, yeah. Yeah, so, so. <clears throat> that's unfortunate, of course. But okay. if it is going on top of another uh, damage card, it would have to go, you know, to fall. Let's like, see, so let's see what one. the second damage card yeah. does to me. Erp, erp. To Okay, when drawn, lose one shield. I don't have any shield. Um, place this card on slot two. And now comes the yep. adrenaline boost and the heavy charge yep. goes back to my hand. And yep. that's it. Correct? Yes, exactly. But uh, Correct. You, you need to say, I am almost done. Yeah? <laughs> one more card on the slot four and I'm out of order. <laughs> almost. Like, you, you still need the... the the fifth card will make you unconscious. Okay. Like, if you cannot put a damage card down, <coughs> yeah. then you are con unconscious. Okay. Also, ich muss jetzt aufpassen, dass ich nicht mehr besonders viel Schaden kriege. Um, aber ich glaube, wir sind wieder an der Reihe, ne? Activation point yeah. flipped. <coughs> mm -hmm. So, um, now I, uh, Emil, can just do uh, either the basic interact card, I could do that, or mm -hmm. I could do a rest action. But how many he has he has one or oh, Andreas you can finish him off if you can do that. <coughs> We can decide who starts. But I can mm. play my advanced cards. I can it's kind of since since Andreas is standing next to him and nullifying his shield, you could just punch him with a basic interact and he would die. Oh, and then I get yes. uh, and then I get my cards back. That would why not, no? Andreas, is okay? Yeah. So I play the basic interact. That means uh, one die plus ein <coughs> Würfel. Let's roll this one just to do it right. That's great because I can recharge one shield. He has no armor because of his uh, disruption suit. So one damage goes through. He is done. And uh, I get this card back on my hand. Die Karte bekomme ich sofort auf meine Hand. Und ich würde jetzt sagen, dass ich die zweite Aktion zum Resten verwende. Das heißt, mm -hmm. uh, this card goes to the discard pile. Is that correct? Yeah. Discard pile. Um, and now my turn is over, which means I rest again. Mm -hmm. uh, keep in mind that there are some cards who trigger when discarding. Now my activation token is done. Turn token only done. Only if you play <laughs> on insane. So. Ah, only insane. Okay. <laughs> but I am insane. not insane. Becky is insane. <laughs> I am not. <coughs> so now uh, it's the enemies, but they don't act as they are inside the room. Right. And now, Andreas, your turn. 
there's only one enemy. Okay. Um, now I move. And roll one die. Mm -hmm. Oh, great move. And then I can move one, two, three. Exactly. Yeah. And you are adjacent to the door on all of the six squares <coughs> around the door. Mm -hmm. Just in case. Okay. Nice to know. Now and comes a special thing now. <laughs> He's preparing the bag. <laughs> I can open the door with one. Yeah, Action? you you can try to open. Now he so, will explain. Yeah. I think uh, Emil will explain. I know what. Yeah, comes because now. it might determine what card you would like to use. Because you have an interact card here, right? A big one, the Oculus uh, hacker goggles here. So the thing is that when you want to interact, successfully interact with doors, uh, consoles, other objects that needs to be interacted with. You need to successfully do that by matching three colored tokens from the interaction bag. The interaction bag has uh, <laughs> three colors with eight tokens, and then they have four white tokens. Mm -hmm. The white tokens act as wild tokens, mm -hmm. meaning they can be any color. Yeah. So when you put down a card that allows you to draw X amount, Anything like two, three, or four, you're allowed to draw up to that amount from the bag. You draw one at a time. Because the only thing you do not want to do is draw two white tokens in the same action. If you do that, the action is cancelled and any tokens you might already have placed at the door will be thrown back into the bag. So the enemies have a security system, right, on, on their... Uh, their doors and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to draw out, and if you get uh, two red and a blue, you would decide to <clears> keep <throat> the two red ones at the door and put the blue one back. Subsequent actions, you would then be able to draw and try to get the red one. If you draw three purple, you can just say, I will keep the purple and put the red ones back, and you have successfully opened the door. Genau, also, der Andreas zeigt euch jetzt, wie wir eine Tür hacken ähm, und da wird er euch wahrscheinlich zeigen, wie man mit dem Oculus Hacker Googles äh, ein benachbartes Objekt aufmacht, denn er muss hier drei passende ähm, Steinchen aus diesem Interaction Back rausziehen. Andreas, Jutta. Wie from the same kind. Genau. Okay. So you could place this one. It has an X, but that means you could play, place it on four, and then you would interact with four. Das ist unfassbar stark. That's so strong. Four times. Four plus one. The die does not upgrade. Otherwise, the X would have been in brackets. Yes. The die can still give you a shield, for example. Okay. And uh, the interaction for the crate is the same? It's the same, yeah. Mm. yeah okay. I asked before uh, b because of I can use uh, the yeah. shield token uh, uh, the, the yeah to gain focus. You could to spend gain focus. Uh, yeah the okay. uh, the but I don't need it. Reality to gain two focus, but no, you don't need that right now. So. Okay, so I all won't die, but yep. no, yes. Oh, that's bad. Oh. No, if you, not necessarily, because if you, if you open it, uh, you can manage move. to open the door, you could move either in or away from the door. Mm, okay. So it's not necessarily bad. Okay. So okay. Uh, Andreas may uh, draw four times, one after another. Er darf yeah. viermal ziehen. Er braucht drei Matching, also er braucht drei übereinstimmende, I wobei <coughs> weiß zählt als Joker. I can draw four yeah. one at the same time. But now, yeah, one, at time. One, one at a time, time, because you do yeah. not ever want to draw too white, because then it's resetted. No. <laughs> yeah. So, that's not good. That's good. Yeah. And, and now draw a white one, please. Or uh, lila. Purple. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, purple. It's open! It's Over open! It <laughs> You're so a master hacker. A master what hacker. <laughs> a premium hacker. So, yeah, what happens is that the blue goes back into the bag, But the three purples stay out of the bag. And we know they the are outside. The rest of the mission, yeah. because yeah. 
now you know <laughs> that purple is not a good color to try to draw for until you have drawn some of the others because now there's a less chance of uh, for of the trade for example color, right? yeah, for the trade. and see now you can use your two movement either in or out or wow. so it's not how all many bad. movement the god have three three yeah come on no, you, you, can, you, you are a coward you no anyway. matter what you, you, no uh, matter where i go do not run yeah. away stand your girl and fight <laughs> oh, i can go yeah. in yeah, you can go. So back. the next You'll movement, do, yeah. uh, the next time I'm. Yeah, you're already oh. adjacent yes. to. Yeah, uh, but but don't block the spot, please. I want to come inside as well. Yeah, go there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So then, uh, the cooldown, and I do the turn track. <clears throat> and now, of course, the enemy is active. Yep. Since he, so he's now the. Lowest initiative, which means that he walks to the nearest. He's already there, and he deals two damage to you, Andreas. So one, okay, shield. one damage, <clears throat> one yep. shield, and the second one, one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh! I don't want to look at that. No, that's not too bad. When drawn, oh, place it on one, Andreas. What happens? Uh, perfect. Hey, no, that what? Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's that's easy now. Okay, cool. Just a minor fracture, yep. a kleiner Bruch. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing that harms us. Okay, it's okay. <clears throat> so, okay, our turn. Um, do we want to finish the guy first? I think so. Heavy charge. Ich denke schon. Ja. Du hast nur ein Schild. Ich habe kein Schild. Ja. Can you kill him? Try it. You have the katana slashers ready? If you want to. Two damage, one. Or the rifle? Yes. No. Okay. <clears throat> katana is Steal my two idea. damage. Yeah, katana can you yeah, katana can give two damage. But then, of course, you have your uh, um, your basic interact, which can also deal damage, and you have a die with it. Oh, the die is only for more adjacent enemies. Yeah, exactly, that upgrades enemies. Yeah, so you can hit even more people. Uh -huh. So, but that means you would probably want to do the basic interact first, because if you punch him very hard, you would, you know, be able to finish him off. Right? Uh, yes, there. <laughs> So one die. I, oh, no, that's oh. what, uh, that doesn't one uh, was a <laughs> roll. <laughs> I only place it. <laughs> then roll the two. It's not no. that bad. <clears throat> one. But he has so no he... shield. No shield. Disruption. So he shield. takes two damage. Yeah. So I can go up with the same one again. Or, or now or, the katana slashers. No, I, de I do th that again. Okay. The basic action. Mm -hmm. Oh, and oh, kill. He's done. Okay. And you, you would also, once you've killed a, a enemy, you would gain one shield, uh, uh, one, uh, sorry, one, one focus. Uh, focus. So, so you could have re-rolled to... <laughs> do you think yes, that... that the same as uh, I thought. Do you think that <laughs> Warhawks is even needed in that mission, or is it a solo mission? <laughs> Turn over and cooldown. <clears throat> so and there's there are no enemies. I can just go and uh, see if I'm of any use. Yeah, time is uh, slowly running out. You also need to get inside this building here. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> uh, but I have to activate now. So I do the basic move. Uh, roll one die. Come. Ah. Plus plus one uh, means two. I think I come to your help, don't I? Oh, uh, you open the door. Also, um, oder öffnest okay. die Tür, weil du bist ja auch noch uh, von okay. der Bewegung once, her once eingeschränkt. The, once the crate is opened, if you look at the campaign, yeah. you can see here. There's uh, a trigger. Once the crate is open, yeah, then both doors will open as well, and ah. then it will spawn two uh, enforcers, so Sack. somebody will come and. I go Start here, shooting. okay, and a second, yeah. a second basic move, okay, and now I'm here. 
I can oh oh now I can also use no I it's it's just a move card I thought I have an interact I go here <coughs> and that's my turn zack 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 <coughs> zack discard the damage card is gone and now we will show uh, an interact for uh, the second time Andreas do you do you want to interact you are the hacker uh, mm -hmm. of course Oh, yes. I have to do the basic action. Yeah, well, no, you don't have to. You could also rest, but uh, the goggles... Uh, the goggles I have will to rest have, twice. Mm, yeah, just show the basic interact. Mm. No, I use yeah, focus. Well, yeah, well. Now we show the reroll. That's a good one. It's better one, it's yes. Two times, two times the interaction back, please. Zweimal ziehen. Uh, oh no. Mm. Oh, oh. That's two purples right now, so that's good. Yeah. Because <clears throat> you can still, on your subsequent turns, you're allowed to draw more whites. So, so and the thing is, since it's attached to the object, I can meaning use that Kor well. Koroks can actually <laughs> start hacking on it, and he only needs to draw one white or a purple, right? Or two other. But if uh, I draw a white, uh, isn't it immediately uh, reset it if I draw one white? No, only because it's it's on a different okay, action. Okay. It's just not on the yeah. same action you're allowed to draw two whites. Okay. Andreas, okay. your second So action. I use yeah. it again. And roll the yes, dice. Yes, I... Oh, wonderful. Mm. Two times. Perfect. Two I times. Don't reroll one. Or oh, it's done. There is it. Nice. Yeah, the crate is open. <laughs> I am the hacker. Yeah, you are the hacker. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you are the hacker, and I'm the pretty one. I'm the pretty looking one here. So that means, of course, that once this crate is open, you would get access to, let's see here, the weapons on. Uh, subsequent uh, missions. Wow! So these are just lying here, just wow. to to tease you. They're teasing cool. you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, wonderful. You, uh, you could put the weapon crate uh, on the ship for opening after the mission ends. Wow! And of course, now somebody is getting angry, and they will take the doors away here, and somebody else will come and hunt you. Okay. So we need number six down here. And and number five up there in the corner. And yep. this is what will happen next. And I think this is enough to trigger the audience. And that I think <laughs> we we showed the basic movement. We showed uh, fighting. Uh, we showed hacking, uh, interacting. And and this is how the game works mechanically, especially on the yep. board. And I think now it's time to talk about uh, the feeling of the game. What we like, probably. What we don't like. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, to the audience, uh, we were lucky to uh, not only get the mechanics explained from Emil, but we had a little footage. We walked the, and we fought. We opened the door. It was never me. It was never Quorox. Uh, <laughs> but I was uh, always uh, on the battlefield. And um, now let's talk about um, what we liked, what we disliked, which will be uh, difficult for me. Andreas, do you want to start? What's the... Th the single thing you liked most about the game it's very fast and you uh, all you do is uh, has a direct impact yeah um it feels very well for the short time i played and i want more <laughs> <laughs> great you can have it on friday this is what i i, I just intercept here that's the minimalism of the game you explain it I, I, you explain it in detail email um, you explained it 10 minutes or 12 minutes and we were both able to play it I was able I read it before Andreas was able so also der Minimalismus in den Regeln it is very easy to play it's just two actions wir können Karten spielen yeah? das Spielen der Karten ist sehr klar it's clear to the players you exactly know where to put the card um, it is written on the card what you have to do. You roll dice, you can boost them, and, and, and that's it. The other opportunity is to regain focus. You can noch focus regain, or you can rest. So, das ist das Minimalistische, aber es funktioniert unfassbar gut. Und um dann noch ein bisschen mehr zu sagen, 
it everything evolves around the character board this is what i like you have the maps there you are playing but i'm always looking on my character board and i'm planning and this is where the table talk starts and where it evolves where it ends and i'm always thinking about which card do i want to use um, also welche karte benutzen wir als nächstes wir sprechen uns ab das ist ja das tolle bei kooperativen brettspielen da wollen wir darüber nach ähm, was ich nicht genau wusste vorher was ich jetzt ganz toll finde ist dass wir <coughs> bevor wir den Würfelwurf gemacht haben, gar nicht entscheiden müssen. So, we just decide after we throw the dice. We can then decide, ah, oh, we better move, we better shoot, we better hack, that's great. Um, and we always think about, can I really block this spot with the card or do I need the spot? Also kann ich mir es wirklich erlauben, einen Slot zu belegen? And I have to, uh, to plan in advance, do I get damage? That means, If I, I, I don't have any free spots, it's difficult to tank, yeah? So everything has to be, yeah, I can anticipate. This is cool. This is very important for a cooperative board game. Uh, sorry, Andreas, that I'm talking that much. But I, I love the way I can anticipate in that game. Also ich mag mm. das total, dass ich im Vorfeld planen kann und ungefähr weiß, was auf mich zukommt. Andreas, wie siehst du das? Ja, ähm, gerade nicht nur die Planung da, bevor ich dran bin, sondern auch diese Planung, während der andere Spieler dran ist und je nachdem, was für eine Entscheidung getroffen wurde oder was dann vielleicht doch anders gelaufen ist, man kann direkt agieren, ohne groß nachzudenken. Imagine also, you are playing with four players, this is even, even yes. cooler. Also gerade mit vier Spielern ähm, kann ich mir das noch besser vorstellen. Und es verlängert die Spielzeit auch nicht Unmengen länger. Nee. Nee. I don't think so too. Ähm, also dieses, diese Möglichkeit, sich abzusprechen und zu reagieren, was die anderen machen, das finde ich auch ganz großartig. Ähm, there is a bit of luck in the game, but it's very few luck. The, it's the dice rolling, yeah? But this is what I like. I do not like games where there is no luck at all. I do own very few games. There is one game, it's Dice War, it's, it's very chess-like, but I think the, the little element of luck is what makes the, the game, what, what creates yeah. tension. What creates yeah. tension. And this is important exactly. for the game. And If there's no luck, then it's a math problem. Mm -hmm. right? Then you know, I have this certain amount, I need this certain amount. So then it just becomes a, a equation you need it's to fix. It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. Yeah, okay. it's a puzzle, basically. But keeping this luck element at a minimum, but there to push players into different situations is important. What I also like is the variety the characters come with. Um, so every character is made of his action cards and the special mm -hmm. skill. And we did not talk uh, about the personality things. Um, <coughs> Andreas, mm -hmm. wir haben noch gar nicht über die Persönlichkeitssachen geredet. Um, man sieht ja auf diesen Charakterboards, sieht man ja diese kleinen Striche. You do paint them uh, when your character evolves. It gets better through the campaign. And then you get more and more token. And this is where I can specialize myself. Also wo ich mich yeah. spezialisieren kann. Weil ich weiß ja... I do know my cards and I know which personality do I need to uh, take on my role. If I am the tank, mm. I, I, I need to get tankier, probably more shields or uh, stronger or, or more damage or something mm. like that. And then uh, this is great. Cool. You, you also get uh, throughout the mission uh, throughout the missions you will also get stickers to put yeah. on the missing spots of the cards so once you start to because you will not be able to choose the personality tokens yourself only one time in the game mm -hmm. because others uh, the other personality traits you get is based on your actions so if you do something that is predominantly dominant then you would get that cool you could also do supportive things like healing other players might give you support tokens so you your your personality will evolve on your uh, based on your choices this is great but your cards and how you specialize your weapons will be trying to specialize them to your personality just like a real soldier like a real soldier 
once they, they prepare for war, actually specialize their weapons a bit to how they want to draw their weapon, how they want to, you know, who has the knight side on this side and this and uh, all that kind of stuff, right? That's, that's, an, that's so, incredible. Yeah. So I did not get that right in the beginning. <laughs> es, es ist nicht an mir zu entscheiden, wie ich meinen Charakter entwickle, sondern es, es hängt davon ab, was ich tue. Das heißt, der Charakter, was er tut, in dem wird er besser. Das heißt, ich kann es dadurch natürlich schon steuern, indem ich zum Beispiel regelmäßig mäßig schieße oder irgendwas nutze, werde ich besser in der Tätigkeit. Um, and if you talk about the story, Emil, um, I, I played three missions up to now. This was my mm -hmm. fourth, but it was not the whole one. Um, you talked about stickers, but you also paint um, allegiances, let's call it. If you decide mm -hmm. the one way or the other, then Umbrasius <coughs> likes you or he dislikes you, and then the story evolves in a different kind. And then, yeah, this, this is uh, an important point uh, to say as well uh, in German. Um, die Story entwickelt sich immer wieder anders, denn ihr habt es vorher gesehen, wir haben uns dazu entschieden, dass wir keinen Companion mitnehmen und dann entwickelt sich die Geschichte anders, als wenn wir einen mitnehmen. Das hat also nicht nur mechanisch die Hintergründe, dass wir dann auf einmal diesen Unblockable Damage bekommen, sondern das läuft auch ganz anders ab. Um, it, yeah, it feels like we are in some kind of yeah, player book. Yeah. Do you know that player book? Uh, in German, we have that uh, Einsamer Wolf, Hexenmeister vom Flammenden Berg. There is sh uh, playbooks. Yeah. And, and it feels like the combination of a player book, uh, r you said it in the beginning, a role play game meets a board game. And, and to that cooldown track, um, this reminds me a bit of Final Fantasy, where you uh, have to put your uh, activation card, your, acti your activity card on a spot. And then you need to wait for it to drop out of the line. And it feels mm. very thematic because, uh, remember, the basic move is easy for me. But if I need the heavy charge, then I have to, to find some rest until to charge again. That, that feels mm. uh, authentic yeah. to me. And, and the damage, how it's... I, I just like the idea of... There are many games that just, like, your character has uh, five shield mm. and ten health. Yeah. And it's like, that means my character functions the same way when it has one health than when it has ten health. And I just like the idea of relative um, damage, which means that in some circumstances, a fracture is worse than a concussion, yeah. depending on what is it that is going to happen or what is it you're trying to do. And also two fortunate blows, like if you get a four card and then you draw another four card, You're done. Yeah. You know, you, you're, your character is down and somebody else has to come and heal you. And that's because you cannot take that amount of damage, uh, you know, It's just unique. Like that, right? It's a unique so. damage system. I never experienced that. Um, das hat Emil jetzt nochmal angesprochen, aber ich bin da voll bei ihm. Dieses Damage System habe ich noch nicht erlebt. Normalerweise hat der Tank 10 Lebenspunkte, der Jäger hat 8 Lebenspunkte, der Heiler hat 4, dann haben wir noch eine Glaskanone mit einem Magier. Aber, aber so ein Damage System, wo die Damage Karten die gleichen Slots belegen, die du für deine Aktivitäten brauchst, kenne ich so nicht. Und du musst auch im Vorfeld eben planen, da sind wir wieder beim Antizipieren, dieser Slot 4, wo eben diese Damage-Karte 4 reinkommt, die muss ja auch frei sein, damit die da rein kann. Andreas, wie gefällt dir das Damage-System? Kennst du das, sowas? Nee, in der Form überhaupt nicht. Hm. Also, ich habe schon überlegt, welches Spiel da irgendwie ähnlich sein könnte, zumindest von denen, was ich gespielt habe, oder auch von denen, was ich fast gehört habe. Hm. Aber es ist interessant. Ich frage mich halt, ich habe auch viele Fragen noch im Hinterkopf, die ich wahrscheinlich erst so in den nächsten Partien dann irgendwie vielleicht mal ähm, eruieren kann. I und think we, we stay in contact. We will, we will ask him uh, if you have questions. Yeah. Ähm, wie verhält sich das jetzt ähm, im Lauf der Partie mit den Verletzungen? Also ich kann es mir echt gut vorstellen, weil es ist halt, man, der macht sich halt nicht mehr so viel Zahlenmanagement hm. im Kopf. Ja. Wie viel Schaden habe ich jetzt? Wie viel da kommt? Und das, ich sehe, bin ich gleich Exhausted hmm. oder bin ich nicht? No oder micromanagement at all. This is great. No micromanagement yeah. at all. And um, I can answer one of your questions. I think the cooldown track is cleared to the beginning of every mission. Is that correct? Yeah. <coughs> das That's heißt, Because, yeah. no damage in the beginning of a mission. Andreas, no, no damage. No, yeah. that was uh, the, the damage that you had was from 
you know the RP, uh, the role playing elements of it right you had to decide something and therefore um just to lead up to that this character that you could have had with you uh she uh, she knows about some booby traps around this camp and therefore if you decide not to have her with you you might have walked into some of those that's why you started with a uh, damage card on you right uh but yeah otherwise you i i want to make sure because as a father of uh, two kids and having other jobs and all that, I need a game that I can put away quickly and then mm -hmm. that I can get to the table quickly. And that means no in-between upkeep. Yeah. I, I don't mm -hmm. want anything where, I've, oh, I've written this and to set up the game, you know, mm -hmm. you need to, no. You just take everything, you uh, take it out of the, the ship box. The ship box will act as your save game. So this box you saw in the in the corner that has a a cut uh, for you can walk in and out of the ship uh, is both a playable area where you will be able to sometimes you know you have people boarding your ship and stuff um, you know you open that box up and you have all the the player components for your characters just laid out you know you start on full shield full fully charged and you know you just go. Hmm. Also, das ist, das ist auch noch eine Sache. Um, very, very few upkeep elements, very few mm. micromanagement. Das heißt, wir haben wenig, das wir wirklich managen müssen zwischen den Aktionen. Wir können das Spiel schnell aufbauen. Uh, Emil hat gerade gesagt, er will auch, er ist auch der Typ, der schnell losspielen will, weil er Vater zweier Kinder ist. Er will jetzt irgendwie nicht erst eine halbe Stunde aufbauen. Andreas, wir beiden spielen zusammen Gloomhaven. Mm. Ich bin immer der Kamerad. Ihr besucht mich, das ist super, aber ich baue eine halbe Stunde vorher auf. Gloomhaven has a lot of things to prepare if you start it. And one of my favorite dungeon crawlers, which I prepare every other dungeon crawler, is Sword and Sorcery. We talked about it. Emil, I love this game. But mm. here you have these priority cards with a lot of things you have to read. And sometimes you forget about things which are decisive, which are very important. And this cannot happen here in Rogue mm. Angles because you have, we did not talk about the uh, um, EBC cards. They are very clearly structured. You just have this special rule in the top and the white box and then we have the priority one the priority two and it's the red uh, enemies the 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 yellow enemies and that's it it's mm. easy it's it's very easy to manage and that's just the whole game is very easy to learn and to master and the 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 depth lies within the actions and the table talk mm. between the players And no. that makes a dungeon crawler perfect for me. Uh, I think, yeah, I really think up to now, what I know, this is one of my most anticipated projects of the year. Really, I, I can't wait for <laughs> February to start the campaign. <laughs> I will, I will be, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I will be on board uh, of the ship and um, <laughs> so many characters to explore, so many stories to explore. I can't wait for it. Also, ich freue mich total auf den Start der Kampagne. We will also have uh, another review. This was the tabletop simulator uh, footage. But we do have the prototype here. We will have a, a detailed review on the table. We will upload it definitely before the campaign starts. Cool. Per uh, personally, great. I had a great time tonight, Emil. Thank you Me too. for for yeah. having having uh, us uh, having the time for us explaining the play game with us. Thank you too. I mean, it's great to to talk to you, and it was cool that you wanted to to do it like this. Yeah, really awesome. uh, That was not the last meeting, I fear. <laughs> Andreas, I, I hope so. <laughs> I hope that we will meet again uh, or do something again. That would be awesome. I will uh, remind you of this invitation. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Great. Andreas, cool, dass du auch dabei warst. Danke dir. Ich hoffe, dir hat Spaß gemacht. Ja, sehr. Ich bin Great. auf die nächsten Runden gespannt. Ich versuche, das direkt äh, auf den Tisch zu bringen. Also mit auf den Tisch, am Tisch zu spielen. Okay, so. Awesome. Keep in mind, 1st of January. Uh, merkt euch den 1. Februar vor, if you are Sci-Fi Dungeon Crawler Fans. Um, who do not want to have a lot of keep up, who do want to have a an awesome an awesome game mechanic. Unique selling point is the game mechanic. Then we have a lot of story to explore. We have the books in the background. We have our own 
book our own story to explore. Wir haben also eine eigene Geschichte. Wir werden Teil der Geschichte sein als Söldner. Äh, Andreas und ich, wir haben das wirklich als eine einzigartige äh, Spielmechanik äh, kennengelernt. Eine Mechanik, die wir so noch nicht kennen über diesen Card-Driven Mechanism, Action Selection Mechanism, wo sich alles einfach um dieses Charakterboard dreht. Wir sind beide total getriggert. Wir freuen uns da unfassbar. Vielen Dank nochmals, Emil, dass du dabei warst an der Stelle und äh, Schreibt uns gerne die Kommentare, wenn ihr Fragen habt zu dem Spiel. Wir stehen mit dem Emil Kontakt. Wir können auf jeden Fall alle Fragen zum Spiel beantworten. Wir freuen uns, wenn wir uns wiedersehen in der Kickstarter-Kampagne. Und wenn ihr den Kanal abonniert und das Glöckchen aktiviert, dann verpasst ihr auch nicht das Review zu Rogue Angels. Und an der Stelle bin ich raus. Marcel von den Herren der Spiele, Emil von Sunzu Games und der liebe Andreas. Wir waren dabei. Ich wünsche euch was. Bis bald. Ciao.